Hello, everyone. Like that. Have for Project Yuba. Um, that's all we have right now. But of course. I have a bit more. Not quite been an hour yet. Um, but I'm going to go off a little bit of actual. Is that any better? Mic is weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as I was saying, um, I have a bit more that I am going to be doing. Um, going to show off a little bit of the edit mode for this. Not really too much, but uh, we have more planned. It's going to be a full blown like release project. So. I believe this is the cutscene, um, and I am absolutely stunned at how well is this went, because I didn't have anything to do with this cutscene. It's only been uh, Farron and Snags and JRL doing this cutscene, so they put a lot of work into this, and they've come along a long way in terms of actually being able to make stuff uh, with logic, because obviously cutscenes are more of a uh, logic thing than art. I'm not sure where everything is at. As you can see, the logo right here animates the pieces coming into place. And then we cut over somewhere right here, I believe. Oh, look at that. There's a face in the back. I didn't even notice. Or maybe down here, I think. Probably. Yeah. Um, that's not the one I wanted to show off or create, uh, though. I believe it was this one. Because this one has more of the actual player logic that I did a lot of work on. So, uh, there is a lot in here, as you can probably see from the frame rate. Let me get this player logic out. There are some features uh, that are actually finished on this player that are not implemented in the actual world yet. Uh, for example, we have grappling, um, where you can grapple up to points and ledges. We also have swinging on a rope, and we also have climbing. I'm not sure if I can exactly find the test level where I have this stuff actually working. Um, but yeah, there's also another system I have here that is specifically for doing um, 2D. It's a very special system that allows you to move only the player in the direction that the camera is looking left and right. So this way you can animate like a camera movement around a cylinder and have the player move around the cylinder. Um, I'm trying to find more of the logic for that because that's not just it. Let's try to find that. No. Here's the reorient logic and this is what controls the uh, actual plane, the Z plane that you're on. So it doesn't um, go off track and we have just a couple of nodes here that reorient you and the way that this works is it'll snap you onto the plane and this is helpful because it allows for a lot more uh, Z difference in actual game design like we can have this level more than just this flat plane and like I said earlier we can go onto separate planes so we can make caves that go in this way and the camera will follow the player, even though the majority of the level is out this way. Uh, 
No lava cookies in this one. We got some ice cookies, moreover. <laughs> Alright. And I don't really have anything more to show for Europa, unfortunately. But I do have another project that I wanted to start on stream and see how far I could get with it. And I was sent this asset collection a few days ago. And I found it was just absolutely chock full of good assets and props and I wanted to make an RTS with it so let's go ahead and get that started and we got this new fresh scene already let's see how fast we can go ahead and get that working so first things first we're probably gonna want to make a camera rig so I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp down a cube for our rig to be on and go ahead and place microchip get out a controller all right and we'll force possess it and we'll allow imp during possession all right and now i'm going to go ahead and actually make this not visible Yada yada. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a advanced mover, get a splitter. Now some of you may not know this, but a lot of the time you're gonna to want to use the left stick local, but you can also use left stick non-local and plug it into a non-local mover and it'll act like it's more localized. So I can get this to work from pretty much any camera angle. So X would be left and right. So if our camera is like this, we're going to do X and then Y would be Z. And we have zero speed, more strength, and of course not local space. And let's go ahead and grab a camera and plop it down in here. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it out pretty far. Cheers, Abby. If you need rest, go ahead and grab that. And there we go. Now I believe we can just move around. Yep. And we already have a camera going. <laughs> uh, imp is a little bit too large, and we can fix that up with our camera right here. Let's see. Imp scale. Let's get that down to about. 50% maybe. There we go. That looks a lot better. And I kind of want to get some smoothing on the camera there. It's a little bit too rough. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some signal manipulators just to smooth it out a bit. Say one second. Smoothing. Just plug that in right here. Let's see how that looks. There we go. Now the camera doesn't instantly stop and it kind of looks a little bit better. All right, so let's go ahead and get our first unit in and try to get some movement logic. Now I believe I'm not sure if this is new or not, but we have this brand new output here, I think. It might have been in the game before, but I don't think so. Hover position right here. And that's going to go ahead and give us the position that the imp is hovering at, I believe. No matter where you're pointing. And we're going to use this to get the point where our logic, well, where our units move to. So I'm going to go ahead and get a number to displayer to see if this actually works in the way I believe it does. Because it outputs 000 if it's not touching anything, which means we have to have um, ground everywhere. <laughs> okay. Oh, that looks pretty correct, other than the UI being in the same place. 
There we go. So, yep, seems to increase properly. I mean, there's no floating point I put on there, but that does work the way we want it. So, we can easily get the imp's cursor position using this new output hover position. I'm not sure if that's new, but I've not seen it before and I had to do some pretty weird stuff in order to get something like that before. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and use that. And we're gonna go ahead and get a wireless transmitter here. And this is gonna be our cursor position. All right, and now let's go ahead and grab a unit. And I believe I have it saved right here. Yes, I do. Let's see, do we wanna do a military soldier first or a tank? What do you guys think, chat? Tank, tank, soldier. Oh, that's two tanks. Vehicle memes. Okay. Let's get a tank then. There's, yeah. Go ahead and grab the newest version. All right, so now we have a tank here. And of course, it's just a model right now. So let's go ahead and make it movable and see how that works. A little bit lopsided. So let's go ahead and add a collision box to this guy and we'll go ahead and disable the collisions of everything else. It's gonna be pretty simple because it's not gonna be advanced movement at all. And I might even have to make this guy hover a bit. Yeah, I haven't streamed in a long time. I need to stream more, it's just hard to find find time for it and I really love making uh, tutorial videos so it's kind of like eh. I could stream but why do that when I could make a tutorial okay and twitch kind of sucks <laughs> yeah there are some issues with people's apps with it sometimes I don't know why Let me go ahead and turn back on everything now that uh, I'm no longer representing uh, <laughs> Mad GFX. That one, not that one. Alert, there we go. Okay. So we got our collision box here. So let's go ahead and put that in. I'm going to go ahead and hide it because we don't need to see it. And I'm going to go ahead and try to find everything in here and make it not collidable. There we go. And now we're no longer lopsided on the ground. That's good. And I'm going to go ahead and unhide this guy so we can get the surface to snap a nice microchip on. And let's see here. I don't know what icon there. Make it green for the military tank color. And that is my, I think, dual stream thing. I don't have that set up completely yet. It's all default noises, oh no. I'm gonna turn that down a bit. Thanks for following, Sam. Okay, now we got a tank model. So let's go ahead and get some tank logic. First off, we're going to want selection logic. 
Jerry plays. Yeah, I set up all my notification stuff so long ago and I need to update it like really bad. Let's just do that and then selection. How do you like a stream? Um, I'm dual streaming to Facebook and to Twitch right now. And Facebook has notifications, so that sound gives you PTSD. Oh god. Um, of course. We need a counter here to save our state of being selected. And then we want to get a wireless receiver here for our cursor position. And we're going to make it scene. Actually, I think I have a different way to do this. Um, we're going to have a trigger zone here. And we're going to change it to tag. Give it a cube. And make it decently sized. And of course, I'm going to lower it into the ground too as well. And what we're going to go ahead and do here, I mean, you get rewards through Streamlabs, the stream to Facebook, apparently, so why not? Did I upload the full version of memes to YouTube? No, not yet. I'm going to make a trailer for it. Um, oh, yes, I need another cube, so I'm just going to copy this cube, delete that logic. And bop, 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 bop. Uh, and I need a wireless receiver, please. And that's going to be a cursor position, scene size. And then I could go ahead and do this. And get a tag here first off. Secondly, I need a follower. And what this is going to do is going to act like our cursor physically in the scene. So we have this plugin right here for target position and we have the cursor position that gives us real space coordinates so this will easily follow our cursor if I go ahead and hit play here it should move to it actually I should probably do this in test mode ah uh, you know you know I really wish <laughs> there was a way I could actually um, have this not be like that yeah by making it fast, making it fast. There we go. Uh, yes, you can share games with people without making it public, but only 10 people at a time, including yourself, I think. There we go. Of course, since we're doing it in test mode, it's hitting itself, or maybe the cube does not go invisible. If I turn on this, maybe, let's try that. No, it's constantly looping over itself. That's strange. So what I will do here is I'm going to go ahead and give it an offset so it won't be able to touch itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and bring it up and bring this tag up to the same position. Now when it follows, it should not touch itself. We won't be able to really see it, but what I can do over here is get this trigger zone set up and name this tag to cursor. And do the same for here. And now we're going to go ahead and add a keyframe just to get some visibility on our selection to see if it's working properly. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a glow, 30%. Now let's see if that works. There we go. And now we'll be able to actually select this guy. course let's see here we don't want 
to actually make it glow. Well, we could. I don't think that looks very nice, but might want to glow a tiny bit, maybe 10%. There we go. And now when we are being hovered and we want to also get the player's input here. So we could either do more, uh, we could do either more wireless transmitters or we could get another controller sensor. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and get another controller sensor because it is a bit easier and I'm also gonna make it so it can only be controlled by the first player. I mean, we don't really have online multiplayer right now, but if we were to make this multiplayer, you probably want to use wireless transmitters instead. Or you could do this selection right here. Possessable, no, we want it remote controllable. And we just wanna get our selection button, which is gonna be X or cross. And then once we do that, we plug into our counter. And let's add a little bit of graphic to signify that we are selected. So I'm going to go ahead and get a cylinder and make it white. And let's see here. I'm going to make it as the size of the tank. Well, the tank is a little bit big right now, so I'm, I'm going to probably shrink it first. 25%. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy for scale. There we go. And go back to our sculpt cylinder. I'm going to make it have the hole there. Shrink it flat. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to just chop it a bit so it is smaller. There we go. And that should be nice enough. What I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and get the player color. So if I get the player ownership, should be able to split this out and get the player color and feed that into the actual color of this little bar down here. Controller color right there. made a trailer cool not many people make trailers for the games so that's cool let me go ahead and put this in the group tint amount and let's see the controller color right this and we get a blue make it glow quite a bit and no emit light there we go and I go ahead and make it not collidable but visible and actually we will make it not visible and when we are selected we're going to go ahead and make it visible all right so now we can go ahead and select this guy if it would work properly I'm pressing x but nothing's happening why is that Oh, because I didn't plug this in, that's why. There we go. There we go. And so now we need a way to deselect, which is not difficult. Where we can do L1 and circle will completely clear our collection of selected objects. And if we're hovered and press circle, then it will just deselect that one or we could invert it because circle if you clear your selection usually in a game you clear all of it 
So L1 in circle will um, do it if it's just this guy. And then we're not holding L1. And we press circle. We'll clear it. There we go. Yeah, online multiplayer is not in the game yet. And it's four player um, per. There we go. That controls pretty well. Um, how long does it take to get familiar with the tool set? Um, it entirely depends on what you want to do. Like sculpting, um, you really need to master moving the imp around and the camera and such and if you have dual shocks it's much I mean moves it's kind of easier um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and get a another cube let's see here the logic itself it depends on you really like I've had people tell me that oh yeah I've been able to do everything in dreams logic wise day one because of little big planet yada 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 so it really depends on your experience but if you are coming in to dreams with no coding experience no electrical experience no little big planet experience it might take you a while which is why my channel is tutorial based but also they put in a lot more tutorials in the game including sculpting animation and stuff like that for the launch so that's great Okay, so what am I doing with this? Oh yeah, this is just a... So I want it so you can move selected units, deselect, and then move uh, others. So how am I going to do this? Okay, what I'm going to do is not this. I don't think I need that. So selection, this just manages if we're selected. So I'm going to go ahead and add a node here that tells us if we are selected because I don't want to mess up this is already pretty messy so I might as well go ahead and just make another output here node this is going to be is selected and this way we're compartmentalizing our logic so if there's something goes wrong we know where the logic goes wrong this is selectable and what am I doing here? Uh, too bad I can't make that wireless, unfortunately. All right, so now we want to get movement logic. Movement. And what we're going to go ahead and do is get a, another thing like this, and we're going to color it like the logic pieces inside of it, because it's movement. Try to match the color as best as possible anyway. I'm going to get a follower, and I'm going to go ahead and make it so it can't control in the... Why? I think. No, we need to make it. Yeah, hold on. We need to do that. And then we're going to do Y. No strength in the Y at all, or damp in the Y. Give it about 90% strength and 92% dampening. 3% speed, or 3 millimeters a second speed. Let's go ahead and get a node in here. Four hour is selected. And is selected, selected. Okay. And now we are going to go ahead and grab another wireless controller sensor. 
because I'm just doing this quickly, as quickly as possible, and wireless stuff is kind of more difficult to set up. Turn off that pesky grid. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get a signal manipulator. I'm also going to go ahead and grab a wireless receiver for our cursor position. Not this guy. Where is... There we go. Cursor position. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is when we get a movement command, we're going to go ahead and store that value here. And we're going to constantly move to that value. So let's go ahead and grab one of these. Try and find it. What are we going to use? Um, R2, because we're already using X. And I don't want to make logic to cancel that out right now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a signal manipulator, another one. And we're going to do customer mapper, and we're going to do threshold. And what this does is basically make it so if we have a value over something, it happens. So if I do like 25, it will activate one, any value over 25. So R2, since it's sensitive, that way we have a more a solid signal rather than a partial signal, as you can see. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is make it so this is frozen and it resets every time this guy does this. So what we need to do is we need to get an AND gate and we're going to plug this in and we're going to plug this in and we're going to need another signal manipulator because we want to go ahead and pulse this and we're going to get a NOT gate as well and what this does is basically it's going to give us a solid signal unless we are selected and R2 is pressed and that's going to go ahead and freeze our output so now we have an actual position to go to but I don't want to go to it unless it's actually been activated once so I'm going to go ahead and grab a counter here as well and that's going to go ahead and activate our follower and then of course our follower gets a target position and so now if we go ahead and do this should be able to select this guy and then he'll go over and move to it but of course um, he's not looking at it so let's go ahead and fix that um, Europa descent is going pretty well we got the intro going we have a consensus on what we want for gameplay style and we have uh, a few scenes done and we are still working on it the intro looks absolutely amazing I'm sorry you missed that I might play it once more before the stream is done being hosted and of course in order to fix this little not looking at it we just want to get a look at rotator and use the same actually rocket rotator would be better for this use the same plug here and it is currently backwards so that's not good and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the strength in the Y and up the strength the 100% we'll see how that looks it's a little fast but of course that can be fixed now I deselect him and I press R2 and nothing happens select him and he'll go around to where I want him to go alright now 
let's go ahead and get some kind of logic for firing. Let's see if we can find a projectile in here that is not too big. Well, I can always just make a projectile on the spot. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to make it yellow. And I'm just going to be lazy and use a cone. There we go. And let's get some glow in there. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and go back in here and hide this again. Don't know why that was unhidden. And let's scale this properly. Okay. There we go. And let's go ahead and make a copy of this that can act as a pseudo enemy for now since we don't have any real logic to this I'll we'll just do that for now and grab a health manager and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is grab a sensor here trigger zone and this way uh, we're gonna get information if we are hovering over an enemy or not since we need that information and not if we are hovering over a player or a player owned vehicle that is all right and let's see here i'm going to detect tag and this would be cursor for now no, we want to do cursor, enemy hover. And over here, of course, on our actual cursor, I believe we have it down here. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, he's up here. Here he is. I'm going to make a copy of this and name it what I named over there. There we go. And so now when this guy is hovering, we can go ahead and get another wireless transmitter. Is hovering enemy. Alright, and over here on our tank, we want to have a knock gate and a receiver. And where is that knock gate? There we go. That way, if we're hovering an enemy, we won't um, move to them, we'll attack them. And let's get some attacking logic here. We'll make it red. Just attack. See how much time I have left. Uh, about seven minutes or so if I want to show off that intro again. Oh, let's see here. We need a 
the same logic here, kind of. But we don't want that in not gate, technically. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are gonna go ahead and add uh, another set down here. It's gonna go ahead and reset this counter for if we are going to get that attack. Thank you for the follow, Aralta. So if we are gonna attack something, then we're gonna go ahead and reset our mover. And we're gonna have the opposite over here. And that's just a pulse, right? Yeah. Might as well grab that as well. Okay, and now we do actually want some movement logic in here. So what we want the movement logic for is if we're not in range to attack something, we want to move to it. Um, so there's a few ways we could do that. We could feed that into here, kind of like a loop, or we could have it in here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, feed it into here because it's going to be a little bit easier to manage because all the movement logic will be on this one microchip. We're gonna go ahead and make it so this is expandable. So we're gonna do like manual move instead of a attack move. And then if we aren't close enough, we're going to go on ahead and do this. So what we're going to go and do is we're going to need to get our distance from something. I do think there are a few mathematical chips on the Dreamiverse for this. So let's go ahead and search for one. not going to use that if we don't have uh, easy plop down like that. So we want to go ahead and get our position. So let's go ahead and put down a tag here to get our position. So tag and I'm going to go ahead and name it for the tank. And now we just need to get our position, which is going to be right here. And I'm going to go ahead and split that instead of just directly plugging in the transform so I can just get the position.
And then, of course, the coordinates that we want to attack at, which is, let's see, cursor position. We're going to want to save the same cursor position. Um, of course, we are probably going to want to get this guy, like their target. So what we can do is we can flash a target um, point or something like that. It might be a little bit difficult to program it so we have more than one uh, target to f actually fire at. So that would be kind of tricky to do. Hmm. Because there's not really a way to like lock onto something specifically. I can, I can think of a system, but it's not going to be something that I can make in like a minute, which I just kind of want to get this to fire, so I'm just going to go ahead and get the cursor position. Can I do it in five minutes? I can do it in five minutes, but I want to play the uh, intro again for uh, Europa Descent, so I don't know. Hold on. I should be able to see. I should be able to just quickly hack this to work. Not gate. And we are going to go ahead and do this counter full here. And gate. And of course, we want an AND gate here. And that's going to plug into here. And that powers stuff on. Okay. And we're going to get a emitter. And it's not going to actually. Uh, well, let's see. I might be able to make it do damage. Because there is a health thing on there. Let's do that. That uh, do ten. I do not care. And then do this emitter. And then we're gonna go ahead and emit this guy. And of course we want to emit it straight ahead. And I'll leave it at that position. Time between emits one. That's fine. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's see. Is he shooting at? Uh, what's going on? Well, this. Oh, God. What is happening now? Oh, <laughs> no. It's wireless. I forgot. Well, something is happening. This counter should be going up, but it's not for some reason. Hmm. Because he's not moving over to it, so that must mean that. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the intro once more for um, Europa Descent, and I will be working on this at some later date, probably on stream. I'm not sure.
trying to raid uh, Freaky, but it's not exactly letting me to do that on my channel dashboard. <laughs> I mean, Meaty Molecule should be hosting them already. Come on. Let me raid them. Do I have to... Yeah. Oh, thanks for the cheer, man. Man, why are you not letting me raid them? They... I was just on their channel. Freaky Dreamer. Why is this... Jeez. Uh, Does anyone know of, of a way to... Maybe you have to be following them? Maybe? <laughs> I'll follow them first. And then I'll try to go and raid them. There we go. Alright, thank you all for watching my stream. Time to raid.